path UC Irvine has taken to get here. One thing's for sure, they're probably sick of orange and black right about now, and teams nicknamed OSU. It's kind of interesting how that's played out. It is interesting going from Oregon State, the national number one seed, Oregon State Beavers, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, orange and black both. But orange and black was good to us. I mean, we uh, pulled off, yeah, trick or treat, and we uh, tricked them. And, and the treat is to go here to Oklahoma State, a program that we highly, highly value and, and highly admire for their consistency. But a lot of traveling. You know, we one Monday night traveled all day Tuesday to get home, get on a plane at 6 a.m. Wednesday to get here by Wednesday afternoon. So today, Thursday, a, a day before the first game. We're kind of relaxing, practicing again, getting back into a routine. Congrats go to Dan Guerrero and that committee for picking UC Irvine and several other teams that were on the bubble for getting in, and they've shown just how well they can play it by upsetting uh, higher ranked and better, um, better known teams, at least for the 14th season. The Big West this year, you know, you play your conference all the time and you think, geez, conference is good this year, but are we? You know, once you get into conference, it's hard to tell. Are we as good as we think we are? Are we as bad as we think, uh, as we seem to be playing? But it was kind of borne out that the Big West this year was very balanced. Fullerton came on late after really faltering most of the year. We were 15 and one in league to start out our year and lose our last eight conference games, eight of our last nine. So we were a cinch to get in, almost played ourselves out. Kind of found ourselves in Corvallis. Maybe it, it took getting away, getting away from the conference. Um, different things. Baseball is a funny sport and we played our best again uh, at Oregon State and at times this year we've been a really good defensive team, have very good starting pitching, the bullpen when we're playing well is good and we seem to be able to manufacture runs. Hit timely, uh, a lot of sacrifices, work our way for walks, a lot of hit and run and um, situational and small ball. It takes a special kind of player to buy into that. I've been blessed to have John Savage uh, starting out our program, now the head coach at UCLA. Tremendous guy, a great coach. Same for Dave Serrano, who brought an exciting brand of baseball to the Anteaters, and uh, John and Dave remain close friends. Gillespie is brilliant. There's, there's a reason he's in the College Hall of Fame. He's one of two guys who won a national championship as a head coach at USC and as a player at USC. But it's his mind how he thinks. And in playing small ball, Gillespie can play the power game, but he's a, a genius at the small ball. For example, we squeeze home two runs on the same play against Oregon State, against the number one team in the country known for their pitching and defense. And in that inning, the fifth inning of game one, we squeezed home three runs with two different batters in the same inning. Yes, it goes into the recruiting. UC Irvine is never going to get, um, quote, a Robin Ventura type. We're talking about Oklahoma State. Pete Incavilla, guy's going to hit 25 home runs. That goes to maybe more uh, storied programs that have a longer uh, tradition of baseball excellence. What he finds at Irvine are young men who are willing to sacrifice for the team that have certain skills and are smart, can read the game, can understand the game, uh, look to put the ball in play because once it's in play you got a chance. Look and enjoy playing hit and run baseball, sacrificing setting a teammate into scoring position and then putting up another teammate to get the job done because they know their time for quote glory will come another time when another teammate sacrifices to put a runner in scoring position for them. So it has to do with the recruiting the type of kid mentally being mentally strong and being able to play the game of baseball. After all, the be beauty of the college game is nobody has that contract, not yet. So they're here and you kind of got to fit in. You kind of got to play team ball where it's a, kind of a free for all, uh, having done a lot of minor league baseball once you get to the pros. Let me start with our center fielder, Justin Castro, hitting just about 250, but he has been a magician in center field. He tracks down baseballs to his left, to his right, over his head, sprawling catches in front of him, and they seem to have come at crucial times. And when he is hit, and he hadn't hit a lot, but he seemed to hit better in the clutch than in uh, a situation leading off an inning or when the game is somewhat under control, one team or the other. So Justin had played redshirt junior, three years in the program, maybe had 20 at bats in his first two years. So he, he starts a lot of games, doesn't always finish them or sometimes finish his game going in for a defensive purpose. He's one guy that's really made a difference after playing not at all. Another one uh, would be Sam Moore, our closer. Sam in two years at Irvine had probably thrown less than 20 innings in the two years combined. 
He develops a split finger over the summer. He needs leads the nation now in saves of 23. Several of them have been two inning saves, and yeah, he slumped a couple times his last few outings, but 23 saves in 27 tries leads the country, and we wouldn't be here without him. He has done, been remarkable and came out of nowhere when they told me this year, and I broadcast every game since 2002, uh, that he would be the closer. I scratched my head and I said, well, I'll keep my thoughts to myself. Well, we were all wrong. He has really been something. Andrew Morales last year was 10-0, uh, a 1-8-9 ERA. This year, uh, he was a Sunday guy. As the Friday guy this year, 10-2, a 1-6 ERA. Add it up, folks. 20 wins, 2 losses in his career. Phenomenal. He was 21-1 and for two years at a junior college. So he is 41-3 and in his college career. And the junior college he played at is among, in a conference as good as anywhere in America. He is a winner. He's, he, he went to Rio Hondo Community College. He's from Covina, Southern California kid. And Mike Gillespie tells me it was a miracle that Irvine got him. Nobody seemed to offer him scholarships after being the state pitcher of the year. People thought he was too small. He was about 5'11", 175 then. Now maybe he's six foot, 200 pounds. He's worked out a lot. He's stronger. He's upped his fastball from when he came here from 88 to now 92, 93 all the time. Great slider. His curveball has developed and a change. Four pitch mix. He is a battler. He's smart. And he's a first team All American for a reason. He earned it. He had no ballyhoo coming in. I can't believe he didn't get drafted last year somewhere. He didn't get drafted at all. He went 10 and 0 in the Big West, a 1.89 ERA, and pitched against major programs. Got wins against the Pac-12, seven or eight in the Big West. Not, um, he's not, he's not Garrett Cole, who when he went to UCLA was 6'5", was the number one draft pick out of high school. But he has developed as a college player. He'll be a great pro. He'll go somewhere. I would think third, fourth round uh, of this year's draft should have a great pro career, but he learned. He is smart. He pitches with his head. He is tough. He knows how to pitch out of jams, and um, he is a, a first-team All-American for a reason. He's done it on the field. He is the most delightful of all the great college baseball coaches I've worked with, charming man I've ever been around. And I've done 20 years of college basketball, I've been around some great coaches uh, at our school and other schools. Can't top it for just being honest, uh, self-effacing, doesn't take himself too serious. Um, realizes one day you're a genius, the next day you're a bum. That kind of goes with being a head coach. And, and of course, he manages the games beautifully. Gillespie, there's so many stories, some I can tell, some I can't. Um, I, I guess uh, if I was to um, give you one just from two days ago, we get off the airplane and uh, Skip is 73 now. So uh, he's not a young man, although his mind is as fluid as ever and as sharp as ever. One of the players, uh, once we got down waiting for our luggage, saw a, a, a vacant um, wheelchair. He goes, Skip, you got to get in the wheelchair, and we got to wheel you around, you know, like an old man. And they wheeled him around the airport as they're picking up bags, and he loved it. And all the players were taking pictures with their cell phones and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, he can laugh at himself. Now, let me tell you what. You cross him as a player, you can go quickly deep on the bench. Um, he's gone out to the mound of pitchers and, and said stuff like, do you like the school? And the pitcher goes, what? He goes, do you enjoy the program? Do you enjoy pitching here? And the pitcher's gone, well, yeah. He goes, then you better start throwing strikes. And turned around and just walked off. So he can be he can be tough with that. And he can he can teach you in different ways. And he can also be so encouraging and so uh, so wonderful with his ear to listen to uh, different questions or different um, processes that his players go through. On the other hand, he can tell you, we brought you here to do this. I know you can do it. Now, I'm not going to baby you. Go out and do it. So he has seen it all. He can come to players and to the press and people in all different directions. But he is a quality human being, and he is a, an outstanding coach. And John Savage, who is now one of the top young coaches in the country, who tutored under him, was his uh, recruiting chief, pitching coach, will credit so much of his success to Mike Gillespie. Gillespie took over after the greatest college coach of all time, probably always will be, Dato won 11 titles. Dato knew how to romance anybody to make that program work. He got the best players and he produced with them. Gillespie took over, he still won national championship, five college world series, uh, 15 postseason appearances in 20 years. 
tremendous job. Mike Garrett, he had a bad year. Mike Garrett decides to fire him. SC hasn't been to the postseason in eight years since then. What do you think? Bad move, USC? Yeah, although they did bounce back this year, and their current coach is doing well. They, I think, will be a tournament team next year because they were young and they were good. But, but Gillespie has taken, Irvine doesn't have the greatest talent, but they're a team, and they have enough talent to win at, win at any level. And it's a uh, credit to Gillespie and his fine young staff for getting Omaha is, I mean, for anybody that hadn't been in the College World Series, you better go whether your team is there or not. It is one of the most wonderful experiences, college or pro, anywhere in the world. That was Coach Serrano in 07, Dave Serrano. Danny Babona, our pitching coach, uh, who was two-time conference pitcher of the year, that came a couple years later, was a freshman on that team. Ben Orloff was the starting shortstop. Ben is one of the lead assistants. He'll be in the third base coaching box tonight for UC Irvine on the 07 team. Uh, we had a great pitcher, Scott Gorgon, a wonderful second baseman, Cody Cipriano, very good first baseman in Taylor Holiday, uh, tremendous defensive catcher. Uh, no, no, no. No, that's right. Very good. No relation, no. And then uh, a very good catcher, Aaron Lowenstein, uh, one of the best defensive center fielders I've ever seen in college baseball, Ollie Litton. And you had Matt Morris. And, well, they okay, they, sw they, they went to Texas. They won three straight. They beat Wake Forest 13-0, beat Texas twice on Texas's home field. Then they go and play Wichita State, and Wichita State had been in the postseason 30 straight times on their field. They win two straight there. They won five straight to go to the College World Series. They made it to the Final Four in the process. They knocked Fullerton out, and they knocked Arizona State out before the eventual national champion, Oregon State, of all people, knocked the Anteaters out, went on to win the national championship. We returned the favor seven years later. And maybe there's another uh, magical run still in, in it for UCI. We're off to the press conference. Thanks so much.